Good morning, everybody. It's Valerie from Valerie's Cuddly Cat Crochet and Sewing. Miss Molly is here with me this morning. See if I can get her to... There we go. There's Miss Molly. I love you. Yes, you're a good girl. Uh, anyway, today is Sunday, May 1st. It is the 1st of May. Yes, it is. <clears throat> in 2022. And I haven't been on in a couple days. So this is not a Seaside Saturday video. I'm skipping that from yesterday. Um, I don't believe I did a, a Winging It Wednesday video this week. I don't think so. <laughs> so uh, I'm skipping those this week. Uh, cannot wait until I'm retired. 24 more work days. And let's see. Molly, are you hiding my calendar? Yes, you are. 32 days, 16 hours, 13 minutes, and 13 seconds. <laughs> so, it's getting there. I am excited. <clears throat> Although, I have to admit, I did feel a little bit kind of, like, sad when um, at the staff meeting this week, they announced the teacher who's going to be replacing me. It's a, um, a student teacher. Well, she's finishing up student teaching, so she's a new teacher. Um I just kind of felt like, you know, a tinge of sadness that, oh, I'm being replaced. But that's okay. <laughs> because I am going to be retired. Yay. I'm so excited. All right. Um, so, first of all, I have, I have my list here. And so I'm just going to kind of do a, a an overview of what I've been doing this past week. Um. So I did have, I did put my new Purse Pal pattern out in, in my Etsy shop, up in my Etsy shop, which Molly's laying on my sample here. In case you have not seen this, I did a separate video on the pattern, um, but in case you have not seen her, this is my Purse Pal, and she's called that because if you pull her dress up over her head... And you cinch her little dress trim. You have a cute little bag. And, um, you know, this, there we go. Um, a cute little bag, right, Miss Molly? <laughs> and it's pretty roomy in there. So you have, inside you have the doll. But you have lots of room to add other things in there. Um, <laughs> including a cat, apparently. Um, so there's room to stick things in there, little snacks or little toys and stuff. Um, and then you just close it up. And then you, when you open her up, you make sure to avoid this. You make sure that you have um, fully expanded her dress. Sorry, it's kind of hard to do that <laughs> anyway, but especially when you have a little helper. <laughs> And so she doesn't have any legs or anything, but I think that just makes her so squishy and she's so fun to snuggle with. And there's so many different ways. I mean, you can customize her hair color. You can change the dress color. Um, <laughs> you can um, add bows and stuff in her hair. Um, did you want to play with her too? Oh, that's so sweet, Miss Molly. Miss Molly wants to play with the purse, pal. So there's just a ton of ways. I, I have an idea for a boy. <laughs> You're a good girl. I have an idea for a boy um, purse pal, but I'm going to wait on working on it for a while because I have other things. I kind of made a, myself a schedule for the next couple months because I was getting too stressed out having too many. I was feeling like I had too many things going on and it was just I was feeling really stressed out. So I'm like, okay. I need to kind of like slow down a little bit and work on one project at a time. <laughs> I keep coming back to that and I don't stay there very long, <laughs> but we're going to try it. Uh, which kind of brings me to um, kind of an interesting situation for me. I, I don't have a project for this week. I, I made a schedule and I was trying to do... Um, I put the blankets aside for now because they were really stressing me out. 
um, I was trying to just stick to amigurumi for a little while. And I made a schedule, like, what's my amigurumi project for the week? What's my sewing project for the week? And then my wings and um, <laughs> Seaside Saturday project for the week. And so I had everything all settled, settled. And then I changed my mind about what I wanted to work on this coming week. And now I'm like, then what am I going to work on? <laughs> so I am going to go over to Michelle Estrada. Um, Pixie Marie Creates. I'm going to go over to her Etsy shop and I think I know the pattern I'm going to purchase and work on this week. I'm not exactly sure. I can't promise you. But I have been admiring her Frog Loving Duck. Um, I'm not exactly sure if that's the title of it, but that it's the pattern where the duck is dressed up with a little frog hat and it's just like so cute. So I might make that one, but I'm I'm saying might because you're just being cute. Are you upstaging me? <laughs> She's just like looking in the air, just like being happy. Um, I'm saying might because there's a, there's a couple other, uh, more than a couple, there's other patterns of hers I've been wanting to make. So I, that's the one I have in mind, but when I go over to her shop, I might find something else that I want to work on. So I am not doing a pattern this week. I do have a fidget, my fidget pattern. Um, it's called the fidget go round and it is finished finally. Um, the pattern itself is such an easy thing to make. It takes like maybe like 30 minutes at the most, not even 30 minutes, probably depending on how you want to like embellish it. Um, but I finally finished writing up the pattern and so it's done. I have two pictures more to insert, but that won't take very long. And I'm going to do my, um, hopefully I'll be able to make a video this Wednesday for my Winging It Wednesday. And then, then I'm going to release that pattern. So anyway, I'll talk more about that on Wednesday or as close as I can get to Wednesday. <laughs> uh, it's going to be the, a busy next few weeks. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of fun that, to know that I can just... I don't, I don't have something I feel like I have to work on today. It's like I can just choose something. <laughs> it's kind of a freeing feeling because I've been, you know, on a roll lately and got to work on this, got to work on that, which is fun too. But it's also fun to go, what am I going to crochet today? There are so many options out there. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. So anyway, the new pattern is in the shop. It's $4, and I think you'll love it. It's a pretty easy make. It is a lot of crocheting for the double crochets, <laughs> um, and it does take a while. Well, it took me a while to crochet. You know, it's because you're like, it's, a, it's like you're making a little a little blanket. I mean, it's like, a, it's a lot, but double crochets goes pretty fast. No, no difficult construction. I do show you in the pattern how to crochet the arms in as you're going. Um, but you also have the option of just sewing them on afterwards, of course. So, yeah. And I thought, I didn't do it, but I thought you could also, like, on the outside of the purse, when the doll is in purse mode, you could also, like, embellish it, you know, put some little um, appliques or something on there. I didn't do it, but I thought that would be, you know, if you stick a flower on there or something, that would be cute. All right, anyway, so that is the purse pile number one. Number two will be the boy one, which I think I have scheduled for a month or so down the road. <laughs> I started to write it up. I started to work on it, and then I'm just like, I have too many things going. I need to I need to slow down a little bit, especially because, like I said, the last month of school, I think it's actually five. Wait. Oh, wow. I just realized that I can see, I, I turned my calendar to May, of course, but you know how the, on the calendar, like the last week, it also shows you part of the next month. So I can see all of my work days on one calendar sheet. <laughs> it's exciting because it's May and then there, we um, go June 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and then we're out and then I'm retired. <laughs> All right, well, so one, two, three, four, five weeks. 
so things are going to get kind of busy. I, um, I did a lot of work in my classroom this week. I had written up myself, I had written a schedule, um, before I went back on Easter break from Easter break. And I said, all right. <laughs> so I wrote myself a schedule when I was going back after Easter break because I was so feeling so tired and just like, how am I ever going to do this? So I divided up all my, my room cleaning chores into, um, like, you know, today I'm going to clean out this drawer. This day I'm going to clean out this part of the cabinet. And that helped mentally because it's like, I, I can do maybe a little bit every day. Um, so this past week, my, my fatigue has not been as bad. Thank God. And so I thought, you know what? I'm just going to push. I'm going to push and just get things done. So I actually, what are you doing? Um, I'm actually, I actually got a lot done last week. So I have not that much left to go in my classroom as far as cleaning and organizing for the next teacher. And girl, you are shedding. I just brushed you and you got fur all over my table. <laughs> so that that's a good feeling. And I've done the same thing with my craft room and sewing room because I have felt more energetic this last week. So I thought... I got to, you know, strike while the iron's hot because I don't know how long this is going to last. So I have pretty much everything done in my crochet room. I have a huge box behind me that has just miscellaneous yarn that I'm going to um, use for my magic balls. And I thought maybe I would do a tutorial on how to make a magic ball when I'm doing that. Um, maybe. I don't know. And then I've got... There's, it's kind of squished back in the corner. There's like a whole tower between this cabinet and that that shelf. There's like a all the way down. You can kind of see some bags and projects. I thought I have nowhere else to put them. And I didn't want to make a place for them. Because these are all things that I'll be finishing up in the next, up like in the next 90 days or so. According to my schedule. So I just thought I'll shove them in the corner. And then as I go, I'll just, you know, work them down and they'll be gone. All right, <clears throat> so lots, lots of things going on. Um, I do have some fabric to show you, and I do have a health update to talk to you about, but I want to put those things at the end in case people don't want to hear them. Um, I do have a Wonka winner. I am in the process of compiling all my Wonka boxes. I have... Uh, and Snoopy boxes. I want to get them all nice and done. I have been working on all kinds of stuff to go inside of them. Been ordering things. My whole entire table in front of me is is filled with Wonka and Snoopy stuff. <laughs> it's kind of fun. It's kind of it's kind of neat. Um, <clears throat> I haven't got them all compiled yet, but my goal is to get them all like put together for the rest of the year, and then each week I'll just you know, pull the ones that I need. Um, <clears throat> so I don't have a Wonka box ready to go yet. I'm hoping they'll be done this week. That is my goal. But I'm going to go ahead and choose a Wonka winner because um, I'm not planning on mailing this until next Thursday or Friday. So I'll be mailing a Wonka and a Snoopy together, but I'm going to wait and choose Snoopy until my next video. Got all that? <laughs> Oh my goodness. So I have already chosen with the random number generator that I found on Google. I chose a winner and the winner was number 23, which doesn't mean anything to you. Um, Evelyn King. So Evelyn King, congratulations. You are the winner of my next Wonka box. And, um, there's still, I have 37 people on my Wonka list and I've already given out one, two, three. This will be my fifth Wonka box that I've given out and I have 21 more boxes to give out between now and November. And then I have also 21 Snoopy boxes to give out between now and November. Um, 
So there's a lot of chance to win. If you have not entered my Wonka or Snoopy giveaways, please go ahead and do so. Um, and the, it, the, it tells you how to do that in the description box below. I am going to start, finally, talking about some Wonka trivia. I'm not going to do it today, but I'm going to show you this book, Pure Imagination. And this is called The Making of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, director Mel Stewart with Josh Young. So I'm going to start reading this for myself, and then I'm going to be choosing some um, facts, some information, um, just some interesting things out of this book to share with you. Um, so <laughs> I just, I, I think this is going to be a great book to read. It's, it's all, it's got color pages. Um, it's got, it looks like it's got a lot of details. Um, I believe I purchased this one. Okay, so I purchased I purchased it used. Um, I'm thinking I bought it from thriftbooks.com, um, but it doesn't, usually thriftbooks.com has a sticker on the side, and this one doesn't, unless I took it off. So, anyway, it's not a new book. Um, I also have a couple other Wonka books. I have Inside Charlie's Chocolate Factory, the complete story of Willy Wonka, the Golden Ticket, and Roald Dahl's most famous creation. I have that one. And I have this one, I Want It Now. And this is by Judy Don Cole, who, who of course plays Veruca Salt in the movie. And she, I've seen her in, in, her, in interviews as an adult, and she's just the cutest thing. Um, she seems so sweet. So this one is actually available on Amazon, or at least it was when I purchased it. You can buy it as a new book. And it's a memoir of life on the set of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory by the original Veruca Salt. <laughs> so, oh, here's a picture of her. Isn't she just adorable? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I had a hard time deciding which one I wanted to start with, but I think I'm going to start with the Pure Imagination one. And then just see, like, how far I get on that and see if I can get to the other ones. Anyway, so I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to actually start reading that today because I have been I watched the movie um, this week. And the, I'm just, like, all into Willy Wonka right now. <laughs> all right. So let's see. I'm going to... Oh, I want to show you one... Oh, two more things. I think this is going to be a long video. I saw this on Llama Mama Kayla's channel and I didn't even finish watching her video. It was like a 12, it was a short video, a 12 minute video. I didn't even finish watching the video. I'm just like, I commented and I, I ran over to Amazon and I purchased this because look at this kit. It is a Mr. Rogers neighborhood crochet kit. Oh my gosh. I don't even know how this one slipped past me. I have quite the collection over there, quite the collection of crochet kits. Now, I honestly admit I don't always enjoy working on them because sometimes they're very fidgety. Fid fidgety? Is that the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Um, sometimes they're finicky, <laughs> whatever I'm trying to say. Sometimes it's just like, oh my gosh, if you've ever worked on a crochet kit, you you kind of know, know my what I'm trying to say. It's... Sometimes they're not the best written. Sometimes they're really hard to work on. I'm still working on the peanuts kit because that one's got some issues. And um, I'm determined to finish it this year, though. <laughs> it's on my list. Um, so, yeah, I mean, sometimes the kits are pretty challenging. And I have a ton that I have not even worked on. I, I've probably got, like... Oh my gosh, at least 30, at least 30 kits. Um, but I had to add this one to my collection. So disclaimer or confession, <laughs> I was not a Mr. Rogers fan when I was little. 
I did not like Mr. Rogers. I thought it was boring. I never watched it. I fell in love with Mr. Rogers as an adult, as a teacher. I love his videos or, you know, I love his shows. Um, I have a couple videos that I've watched. I just, I don't know. I just, I love, I love his philosophy. Um, I've got a couple posters in my classroom of Mr. Rogers quotes and stuff. So when I saw this, I'm like, oh yeah, I got to go buy it right now. So it's mine. It's mine. So here's all the characters that you get. Um, and no, I don't know all the names of all of them. Um, <laughs> but I just, and, and of course the kit will come with, you know, there's the yarn to make Mr. Rogers and um, Daniel Striped Tiger. But uh, like Kayla said with hers, um, and like what I usually do is I don't usually use the yarn that they put in here. I usually use a worsted weight and, and, and the kits usually um, put in a, um, a two weight. But I am getting more comfortable with using a two or a three weight. Anyway, so I am excited. I am excited about just owning this kit. Who knows when I'll actually get to crochet it. I'm just excited about owning it. <laughs> so there we go. All right. Drum roll, please. Uh, Miss Molly has left the building, so I have a little more space to work and show you what is going in the shop. Today or tomorrow, I would suggest that if you are not a member of my Facebook group, you might want to request to join. The information is in the description box below because when my bags go live on my Etsy shop, I will put a an announcement in my Facebook group. I won't come on and make another video because this is my video for that. Um, so let me just go ahead and show you the bags. I have 10 bags and they are going to be on sale in for sale in my shop. Like I said, today or tomorrow and I'll let you know on my uh, Facebook, in my Facebook group. Otherwise, if I think, I don't know, if you favorite my shop, do you get announcements when I, I don't think so. I don't know. Anyway, um, otherwise you can just check back or whatever, but I'm going to show you my bags. And if you'd like one, I would love it if you would purchase it. And I just, I might not get it in the mail ASAP. It might be um, kind of Friday is my, my mail day. Um, at least now when I'm working, when I'm retired, I'm planning to go a couple times a week if I need to, but now I just can't. Um, I'm probably not going to send them out until Friday. So, um, maybe sooner. I don't know. I just, it just depends on how well they sell and how things are going this week. And I just remembered I have a late meeting on Tuesday, so it might not be until Friday that I mail them. So anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and show you my my bags so here is the first one and these are all wrist bags so what that means is they are bags that you hold on your wrist and then you can put your crochet stuff in there and then you can crochet while you're holding your bag and if they're little they're small because they I mean they're, they need to be small because you don't want a big heavy bag you know laying on your wrist and you know holding you don't want to be have it holding too much. You basically just want a pattern if you need it, your yarn hook, and your a little a little thing of yarn. It will probably not hold no, it won't hold like a full skein of yarn. Um, but you could put in like a like a ball or something. I do have them. My idea was to have this be a pocket, but it actually ends up splitting the bag in half inside which is kind of neat because you can put your pattern and your hook and whatever on one side and then your yarn on the other side so the yarn doesn't get tangled up with your your pattern or whatever you can even tuck some little scissors in there so I'm still calling it a pocket although it is more like a divider in there and it's hard to show you the inside <laughs> Um, it is not reversible because of the way I stitched it closed. 
Uh, it does have my new labels on there. And it says Valerie's Cuddly Cat Crochet and Sewing. So I'm really happy about my new labels. So, let's see. I'm trying to think of like something standard that I could show you, but, but I can't. So it's just, it's a little bag. The bottoms are just plain across. And it's the same on both sides. And I just, you know, it's just, it's a perfect little thing to have on your hand and just, you know, walk around and crochet if you're, you know, or just sit and crochet and everything's there. So I've got this one. And they're all, well, I, they're not all different, but I've got two of these with the yellow on the inside. Yellow. And here is another one of the purples. So I have got two of each. I couldn't remember exactly how I did that. So I've got two of the pinks and they've got, everything has my tags on it. And this has pink on the inside. And I'm actually like, not to brag on myself, but I did a really good job sewing on these, if I do say so myself. <laughs> so here are some dragonflies. It's kind of a closer up, close up picture. And the dragonflies have a purple lining in the middle. So just purple lining in there. And these all have the pockets, dividers, whatever you want to call them. And then I have two of the blue dragonflies. This one needs to be ironed. It was on the bottom of the stack. So I have 10 bags, five styles, two of each style. And I'm not exactly sure. Like I've never listed a, a physical object on Etsy. So that's, this is kind of an experiment for me as far as that goes too. Um, I guess shipping is calculated. Etsy does the calculation for that. So I, I don't think I have any say on shipping. Um, so it's kind of an experiment. Uh, I'm hoping they sell well because I loved making them and I have ideas to improve on them or add different different things. I do want to make some with boxed bottoms eventually, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because if these don't sell, then I'm not going to make any more. But um, if they do sell, I will be making more because like I said, I loved them. They were really fun to make and I think people will like them. Um, I didn't make one for myself. I have my, like my prototype one, um, that I could use, but I need to make one for myself because I think I would love to use it. All right. So that's that. Um, this is going to be a very long video. I am so sorry. So I'm going to pause it and open up my, my, um, package of fabric, which I know I did not need fabric. I know that, but I just love um, the place I bought, I purchased it from. And so my favorite quilt store is the name of it. I know I, I was kind of, um, talking a lot about how pleased I was with the last order I purchased from them. So I just felt like in the mood to buy more fabric. So I did. And it shipped so fast. I, I got it in way less than a week. So let me pause, open up the bag and I'll show you what I purchased. All right. So here's the card again. Um, my favorite quilt store, my favorite quilt store.com. And I love, I love, I've been like 100% pleased and satisfied with the quality, with the service, with the, how fast I get my objects, with the prices. I have just been, I have not even searched like the main part of their store. I've just looked at the, um, what was it called? Was it called clearance or, or mill ins or not mill ins. Let's see if it says on my receipt. Um, end of bolt. So I've just been getting the end of bolt. I don't know if they're reduced in price or not. 
Um, I don't really think so. I think it's just the same as the same price, I think. As, you know, what their fabric by by yard is, which is, I think it's a good price for that too. So I've just been searching in the end of bolt section because they have so many wonderful fabrics. I thought if I searched like everything, I would end up spending, you know, thousands of dollars <laughs> because I love their fabric. So I just kind of, that's what I've been doing. I just tell myself I'm going to look at this section end of bolt. So you get what you get, you, you know, whatever piece is there, it could measure whatever, um, which is fine with me. So I'm just going to go through these really quickly because I still want to tell you my um, doctor story. If you're sticking around here, this is really pretty. Oh my gosh. I've got to make myself a wrist bag out of that. Oh, look at this one. That is so pretty. These are all beautiful. And the quality is just, I love the way they feel. It's, I think it's beautiful quality. So this one had two. Look at those colors. And then look at this one. Oh my gosh. Oh, how cute. <laughs> and this one. And also, if I'm looking at end of bolt, I'm also getting things that I might not normally choose. I would not choose this for myself. I love it. It's beautiful. It's just not my color scheme. Um, but if it's end of bolt, even though I don't think I'm getting any price off of it, um, I still feel like I'm getting a deal or something. I don't know. I need to check into that. I, it might be a little, a little bit cheaper. Look at this one. This one's almost a full yard. That is so pretty. And I got some breast cancer ones. There's, I think, a couple more coming up in a minute. Ooh, look at that one. So pretty. And then this one. And then there's two of these. I don't know where I'm going to put these. My fabric drawers are full. Okay, there's two of these. And I don't know, they're all different lengths. Um, oh my gosh, wait till you see. This one's really pretty. We'll wait till you see the next one. It's so cute. This is my favorite one so far. Oh my gosh, look at that. I just love it. I just love it. Ooh, this one is so pretty. It's like a vintage-y. vintage -y kind of. Ooh, I like that one. Okay, this one's not my favorite. This one is very pretty. And then there's two of these. So strength, support, hope, the breast cancer ribbons. And then there's so two of those. So again, I am so pleased with my order from them. Um, my favorite quilt store dot com definitely go there so i think the fabrics that i showed you of course they were different lengths um but I'm trying to see if there was like a basic price um the most i paid for a piece was ten dollars but most of them were less than that. Most of them were about um, five or six or seven. I mean, it depended on how much there were, but I, it looks like I'm paying about $10 a yard, which I'm happy with because it's, it's a good quality fabric. So anyway, all right, so let me get, let me tell you about my doctor story. If you're still around, thanks for sticking around this, this long. I know it's a long video. Um, and if you don't care about my doctor story, you can just turn the video off and I'll see you next week. But 
if you are sticking around for this, um, I'd love to hear your comments, your thoughts, your opinion. Um, I gotta watch the clock here because I have to leave for church in like 15 minutes. But this won't take 15 minutes, don't worry. So, I've been waiting for the doctor to get back to me about my blood work, which my bruise is still there. It's fading, but it's... <laughs> you can still see it. It's, you can still see it a lot. It's been three weeks now? Two weeks? Three weeks? I don't even know. Um, <clears throat> so, I forgot where I left off on my story, but I was waiting for the doctor to call me. She didn't call me. She didn't call me. And then I got the blood test results pretty much immediately, and it looked like... Um, rheumatoid arthritis was what was going on. I mean, I don't know, but that's what it's one of my room. It's rheumatoid factor was like way up. Um, and so I just waited for the doctor to call me. Oh, I was waiting for her to comment on my, my chart. Um, it's a computer app thing, whatever. And she always comments on the blood work and then she'll like say, well, this level's high, so let's do this. And you know, this level's fine, so we're not, we're just going to not worry about it. I mean, she'll, she'll make her comments there. And so I just kept waiting and waiting and waiting. Nothing, 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 nothing. So finally, um, I know the doctor, I think where I left off is that the doctor, the nurse had called me and said, I want to talk to you about your blood work. And so I tried to call her back and he kept going to voicemail and I knew, she, it's like, oh my gosh. So she finally got a hold of me on Monday. I know I have not talked to you since then. So the nurse called. It was in the middle of my class. I'm like, I don't even care. I'm taking this call. She calls my cell phone like I asked her to. And she said, okay, well, she sounded like she had never even looked at my stuff. Because she's like, um, this is the nurse, not the doctor. Um, well, let's see. Uh... Um, okay, well, oh, the doctor says, um, that you might possibly have rheumatoid arthritis. And before I could ask her, like, cause I'd already figured, I thought that was where we were going. Um, from what, I mean, what do I know? But that's what it looked like the blood work said. So before I could even ask her, like, okay, so what are, am I getting referred to another rheumatologist? You know, what's going on? What's the next step? Before I could ask her any of that, and, and she said, and, um, oh, and this is, this number, this, I forgot what it, what it is now, but it's a, a inflammation rate, CRP, I don't know if that's right. Oh, that number's down. It's still above where it's supposed to be. That's good. <laughs> like, what's going on here? And then... So I'm still like getting ready to say, okay, so what's the next step? And then she goes, um, now the doctor wants to know, no, your, your liver levels are high, which they've been high for a while. And we know it's because of my weight and stuff and it's going to be worked on. But she's like, now your liver, now the, now your doctor wants, Dr. Perez, it's the doctor I see, um, Dr. Perez wants to know why, um, you know, she sent you to Dr. Gelardo um, for your liver and um, it looks like you didn't, like you went one time and then you were ordered, had to get some tests and you didn't get those tests done. I'm like, excuse me, what are you talking about? I don't even know who this Dr. Gelardo is. I've never seen this doctor. What kind of a doctor is this person? She's like, um, I think she's an endocrinologist. I'm like, I have never, I don't know what you're talking about. I wasn't quite that rude to her, but I, I'm like, I was very forceful. I'm like, I don't know who, I've never been to see this doctor. Nope. Dr. Perez has never told me to see an, an endo, endo, endocrinologist for my liver. And I felt like saying, and what does this have to do with what's going on with me right now? She's like, oh, really? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to. May, I don't know. Let me talk to the doctor. She's not in today, but I'll, I'll talk to her tomorrow and I'll get back to you about that. So that just threw me all off because I'm like, she's like putting it on me saying I had been to somebody who I'd never been to. And then I had 
I had not been doing what that doctor said. And I was supposed to follow up back with Dr. Perez. And I'm like, what? So the nurse never called me back. <laughs> I still don't know what that was about. If they were confusing me with another patient. I, I, I even, I even was questioning myself. I even looked back on all of my, um, my visit notes and everything from like, what the doctor writes for my visit notes in the, in the, my chart app is never. I, she's been concerned about my liver enzymes or whatever, but, um, she's never, ever, ever referred me to anybody. I know I've never seen anybody. I mean, I would know if I'd been to an endocrinologist and I would certainly know if I had been not being compliant with the other doctor. I'm like, what? so I'm in trouble for not being compliant with a doctor I've never been to. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, I'm in the hands of idiots. So I didn't, she, that, and that was it. She goes, I'll call you back. And I'm, and I, after I hung up, I'm like, okay, so now what is, what, how, this is not getting me anywhere. Okay. Uh, I, I don't care about liver enzymes right now, quite honestly. Um, I know diet and exercise and weight loss will fix that. And I'm going to work on that when I retire. And I've talked to the doctor about that. And I thought, I, I, don't, I don't even know. So I didn't ask, like, okay, so now what's the next step about what's really going on? I'm like, okay, when she calls back tomorrow, I'm going to ask her. Well, she never called back. I knew she wouldn't. So I was furious. I'm like, what in the heck is going on? They're confusing me with some other patient. I, I, and I don't get any referrals. I don't get any... Nothing. So I'm like, so I just, I, I thought about that for a couple days. Like, what am I going to do? I don't under, understand. What, what can I do? Um, before I had really made up my mind, I mean, I, I didn't know what to do. So Thursday, <laughs> Thursday comes around and I finally get a notification that my doctor has commented on my blood work. She has like, like she always does, but doesn't usually wait for this long. She always goes in and makes the comments and says, okay, well, so let's go ahead and do this because this level's high. I'm like, this is what I've been waiting for. Okay, finally. Okay, I don't know why it's taken this long, but okay, good, doctor commented, great. Let me go in and check my file. Let me check, let me check the comments. Let me read. Let me see what she has, has to say. I'm like, okay, gosh, answers. Good. Great. I opened up those comments on Thursday. Today is Sunday. I am still in shock. So she looks at all my blood work. And she writes, most of your levels are normal. Please lose weight, basically, eat healthier, and exercise as much as you can. That was it. No referral to anybody. We had talked about being referred to another rheumatologist or a neurologist when I saw her on my last visit. Nothing. No follow-up appointment. No. Nothing. I I'm still in shock. I go to you for, ex I mean, all of my symptoms, which I know she heard me. Because they're in, the, when I went to the last visit, her notes have all of my symptoms. She's totally dismissed me. Totally dismissed me. And apparently has is saying that everything that I'm experiencing is because of my weight. And she did also say reduce stress. 
She did also, um, what was the other thing? Oh, she, she did also say that instead of Motrin, which I have been trying and I told her it doesn't work, she goes, I could try Tylenol. That's it. I, 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 I have, I have no words. <laughs> I have no words. Um, I don't, I, I, I just don't, I, I can't believe I have been so good at expressing myself and saying, this is what's going on with me. Where in the past, I haven't always been able to do that. It's It's been hard to communicate with doctors for me. But I felt like I've done such a good job of saying, this hurts when I do, you know, when this happens. And here's how the fatigue is going. And here's how the numbness is going. She thinks it's all in my head. She's totally dismissed me. And that is devastating to me. I don't trust doctors to begin with. And I, I put trust in her only to be completely dismissed. I, again, I just, I don't, so I, I, I actually have done some asking around and I have a name of a, of a, a person who's supposed to be a good doctor, but I just don't know if I can do it. I do not know if I can put myself out there again. I mean, I I have to because of the symptoms. They have gotten a lot better this last week. So I am assuming I had I was having another flare up of what I don't know, but it's just like how how in the world can you just tell somebody who has all these major major symptoms who never complains about things I'm a kind of person that's just like, oh, I'll just suck it up and, you know. But when I do reach out for help, I am seriously in need of help because I've waited so long. And, I mean, I just, I don't know. I just feel betrayed, abandoned. My trust has been, I mean, broken, crushed, stepped on, smashed. So anyway, um, sorry I went on and on about that. I just had to share because I feel like I'm back at square one now, but I'm all I'm back at square one with even less trust than I had before. And I just don't get it. I just don't get it. All right, everybody, I gotta go. I gotta get ready to go to church and um, pray about all this. <laughs> apparently. So I hope you've enjoyed my video, maybe except for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Bye.